The Troubles were like a backdrop to our work. And whilst a lot of work went on very normally and with no difficulty, that anxiety about the Troubles was there in the background. As individuals, we ran the risk of running into events. The abnormal was, was normal and it wasn't particularly different. I came from South Armagh and my first social work job was in North Belfast. By and large, very good relationships with, with the families I worked with, but you'd walk into a room and people would have been having a conversation about what they did at the weekend and that conversation would stop. Having the name Eamon didn't necessarily go down too well in some poor military housing estates in the Cool Rain area. Some of the locals in the bog side thought that I was uh, an undercover RUC agent and was approached. We didn't get into political discourse, we didn't get into analysis. We just tried to serve the people we were meant to serve, people who had been placed on probation. I got to know people from Northern Ireland, so I'd visited quite a lot before I came. And I had gotten over that feeling that, you know, I'd be some, I'd be unsafe or, you know, I'd be putting myself at risk. And one of the things that I was very mindful of in the work that I did with the young people was the paramilitary presence in the community. And not so much as it impacted on me, but as it impacted on them. Lots of times things were quiet, things didn't happen, and then all of a sudden there could be an attack. Our office was hit by a rocket and was damaged, so we were out of our probation office. There was that tension in the background, and as the team we supported each other, we knew what was going on, and we knew to take care. There was disruption. Nobody was saying, well, we'll take your caseload off you, or, you know, you still had to keep going. You had the parents to consider, and you had the children to consider, and all around you, there was mayhem, there were people knocking at the door, wanting to know who you were. Confidentiality meant nothing. You're in our area, you let us know who you are, what you're doing, and who you're visiting. Otherwise, you're not welcome, and out you go. You were maybe in the middle of a house in the state and trying to do child protection work, and everybody was like in a mass exit from that house in the state. So you did things to protect yourself, so you would have used pseudo names. I was never um, Philomena. People would have called me Felicity or Phyllis. As a manager, I was also very concerned about staff who, for one reason or another, were at risk and sending staff out into situations where they could be exposed to danger. And I do recall on, on, on occasions asking staff not to go out on certain occasions. Having been brought up in very leafy, very quiet, very Protestant East Belfast, not really knowing much about the troubles except what you saw on the TV. There were lots of secretaries and things who worked on the perimeters, but they weren't into the H blocks. When you're surrounded by a group of paramilitary prisoners who are staring at you and only one is talking, and you know it's a tactic to ask you to phone home or do a message for them of some sort. But before that, they said, we like the color of the new car that you're going to get next week. They were able to tell me what my registration number was, and I didn't even know it. And that's what was happening every day. But we still had our job to do as child care and child protection social work staff. And at times you were maybe naive and the adrenaline got going and you went into situations. I'm not exaggerating, there was a helicopter ahead and there were two army land rovers and myself and two staff to take children in the care. There was no script for this. Nobody had told us how to do this. We kind of made it up as we went along. And whilst we tried to be very professional about it, we were also trying to be very human about it. The team was made up of people of different political backgrounds, of different religious backgrounds, that worked together positively. There was a common bond and those very good relationships that, that kept you going. We were able to develop a network of communication and support that actually saved a lot of people, that were able to connect them again to have their voices heard and to make sure that they weren't completely downtrodden and lost in the darkness that was around at that stage. We didn't talk about it. It wasn't acknowledged. It became the norm. I suddenly realised that is so abnormal as a way of practising. But ironically, I don't think it actually got in the way of our good practice under these hugely abnormal circumstances.